So to create our mock service, what we first need is a transaction. Now we can import these from things like WireMock and MockLab, Swagger, there's various ways, or we can create them manually. And we're going to go through creating one manually. We're going to associate some test data first. So we're going to go into our service data and say, let's create some test data. We're going to give this a name. This is going to be our credit data. And the first thing we need to do is the rules we need to use to actually generate the data, this synthetic data. And we can add that by using our examples. So we're going to add some examples here using our examples from the system and just add those. Now our examples have got things like names, dates of birth, email addresses. We can include values. And we're going to just take this sample. So if I look at this one here, we can preview this. So we can get a first name, which is Daniel, and we can bind these to make our email addresses. We can then use this data in our mock service. So let's now create a transaction. So we're going to say this is our credit transaction. So we choose the method. So we can use all the normal methods. We're going to use a get. And we're going to say when we hit the endpoint credit and we pass it certain parameters. So perhaps for example, we're going to have a value. And that value can meet certain criteria. We're going to say if it equals 20. And perhaps the first name that we pass as well is going to equal some of our test data. So let's take this first name value and add it to our transaction. Now our request can also be updated for the header, the cookies and everything else, but we're going to use just the basics for this get. We then do a response. So what is the response we need to send back should this request be matched? We can use the same test data in our response. So as you can see here, we're going to say, we're going to send this response back and perhaps we're going to take the email address as well and then just close it. So we've now got a very simple request response. We can tag it so it's easy to find and we save it. So now we have a transaction, let's create a mock service. So we go and say create from transactions. We give it a name, a credit service. We choose the location to run this inside or outside the firewall and if it's an SSL or non-SSL. We choose the transactions that will make up our our service. I'm going to add that transaction we just created. We then choose the data. So if you remember we associated our data entity to our service. We can come in here and say now how much data do we need? So at the moment we've got a record. Perhaps we want a hundred records. So we're now generating this data synthetically and you can see we've got our first names, our last names, dates of birth, social security numbers. And we say save. That mock service is now ready to be used and I start it. We're now starting the mock service, and in a few seconds, what we'll get is an endpoint that we can then use to test. It. So our mock service is now running, and we've got the endpoint. So we can take this URL. So let's paste in our endpoint. There's our endpoint. As you can see, we paste in mark, and we've got the return mark.addGate. If we change that, and we change the first name to be another user, so perhaps Landon, we can now see the mock service responding and we can click on the analytics the mock service refresh the screen we can see those requests we sent we can then query those and then look at the corresponding responses that are sent back to analyze how our mock service is performing and that's how you can build a data-driven mock service in under two minutes